So there's a hush that falls over the crowd as the champion steps into the ring to duel you for the hand of the princess. How do you proceed with this fight, sir? Yeah, all right. So I gave this some thought. I was up all night last night. What I want to do is like pretend that I don't really know what I'm doing here and that I'm kind of buffoonish, not as strong as I am, you know? So when he th throws a punch at me or makes a strike at me, I'm gonna like try to block, but but be real bad at it, you know? And maybe, maybe that'll leave him open for something and I can just like <clears throat> really take him out. So I should okay. roll, right? Yeah, that's good. What are you gonna roll? Oh, that would be strength deception, you know? Strength deception, trying to trick him, you know? Oh, well, I mean, uh, to me, that could be a way because you're still wanting to try to to uh, to do the thing. It seems to me like that's more of a charisma athletics check, trying to I, I, throw I, off. I, I, what I, you I didn't do. take athletics proficiency. Come on, I got the strength, I got the deception. Like I, I, you know, I'm really trying to trying to trick him, you know, and and at the same time trying to show the princess that I'm tough and strong. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that is a pretty strong deception then. At least it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a good you subject. Know, that's, it is a good subject, you know? That's that's a really good topic. I wonder if we should do a video on this sometime. Well, why do it then when we can do it now? Yeah, let's, talk let's just about do it right alternate now. Alternate skills. Alternate skill proficiencies on WebDM. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. All right, Jim. Since Travis won't let me use my dexterity to do intros, Mm. Give me the tools to combat him in an argument. So let, let's talk about using different skills for different ability checks. Yeah, one of the coolest things about the, uh, the way that 5th edition handles skills is the interchangeability between skill proficiencies and abilities. And so could cause some confusion, though, right? Because in the PHB, mm -hmm. it's presented as a variant. You know, like, oh, you might be allowed to do this kind of thing. Whereas in the DMG, it's sort of like, sometimes a player will suggest a different proficiency for their ability. Yeah, yeah. You can see how, at least the way the rules are written, it, I don't know, might cause some confusion, I guess, uh, in terms of what should, you know, what you should do, how the DM should uh, adjudicate an action, something like that. But mm -hmm. I find that the mixing up uh, skill, you know, skill proficiencies and ability checks is one of those things that, I don't know, always adds something to a moment. It, it really highlights what's unique about that one situation. And, mm -hmm. and some, like, characters that have the sort of skill proficiencies that don't get used a lot, maybe it's an opportunity for them to, to use those and sort of highlight that portion of their character or that facet of them. Or it's something where it's like, all right, well, it's going to be, this is a little different. You're not just going to make a regular dexterity check uh, like you would. This, the situation calls for something a bit different. Like you said, it often offers a lot of variability and offers uniqueness to players. So even though they might be good, like two different players might be good at the same proficiency, they come about mm -hmm. it from two mm -hmm. different ways. You know, one person yeah. uses their mind where the other person uses their body more for certain things. I really like it and I, to me it's not a variant, it's just how do you, you know, how do you really want to handle this? Sometimes when it's brought up, it's like, well, you know, that's usually associated with this ability and it's like, mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't okay. mean doesn't that it can't be. be used. <laughs> like, hear the player out. Maybe they have a good pitch, you know. So yeah. I, I just yeah. think that, you know, I hope everybody comes away from this video, like, with the freedom to, to, to know that, like, hey, sometimes you might make a constitution acrobatics check if you're doing something yeah. that's acrobatic over a long... If you're walking a tightrope across, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yards, well, that's gonna, it's going to wear on you a little bit. You got to make sure Certainly. you keep that up, right? Yeah, and I, I find like thinking of situations like that is how you can arrive at different combinations. Like if you don't, if you don't start from mechanics, if you start from what's happening in the game world, and then yeah. seek an answer in the rules for that situation instead of the other way around, where you're like, oh, I'm going to use a mechanic and then force it into this, you know, the game situation. But if you start from the fiction first, then 
uh, a lot of these combinations start becoming very natural and like, oh yeah, this really should be a different ability and skill combination. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that there's just some weird combos with the base skills and abilities to begin with. You mean the fact that all clerics have religion or usually should have religion, but it's an <laughs> intelligence, it's intelligence yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or medicine uh, is wisdom. That's another one that crops up for me. Medicine being wisdom. It, like, I think it says something about the world, but it's also like, why wouldn't it be intelligence in this case? Yeah. Somebody uh, who studied medicine. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I, I really feel that this is the right answer. Didn't you study for years? <laughs> yeah, but that, no, 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 no. But I feel. So strength, Jim. What what is a what does a strength stealth check look like to you? Uh, strength stealth check is, is one of those where it's a very particular type of situation. I am above you, you you know like wedged myself in somewhere and mm -hmm. you don't see me, right? I'm in a hallway. I, I'm trying to hang from something. You know, it's not a matter of like being nimble or quiet so much as it is keeping the position of unseen that you have in a precarious perch. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're trying to hold on to a tree limb, uh, you know, you're, you're perched up in a tree somewhere and it's less about like, you know, whether you're not you're you're balanced or whether you're, you know, you're nimble in that situation. It's like, do you fall out, you know, because you just can't hang on that long. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the, the one I was really thinking of, though, is like you're hanging above the ceiling, you know, pressing your limbs against the sides of a wall and the, you know, your enemies walking beneath you. And when do you drop down and, and strike? You're sneaking up and you're doing the, we're on the edge of like a, a cliff or yeah. something and you're edging along while people are walking just above you. I could see how you could argue for strength or constitution if you're having to do it for a really long time. Maybe it's more about your, your endurance. You know, maybe you're just really strong. So, hey, you can just hang on because of your strength. Uh, yes. So, yeah. But that's, again, that's, again, different ways to kind of arrive at the same conclusion. Another one I think that is used a lot is the, the strength intimidate. You gotta oh, have yeah, somebody back there just one. flexing, right? Just flexing, yeah. Show us how much you're gonna hurt us if we don't do what you want. But there's a lot of different ways intimidate can be used and I find it is like just limiting it to charisma is uh, is unfortunate. But yeah, strength intimidate is, is kind of a classic one, uh, especially cause like half orcs or something get, you know, get this proficiency. And yet we don't often think of half orcs as being very charismatic. And thankfully there's not a lot of ability score penalties uh, in fifth edition, but it, it, it does, it creates sort of an incongruous, like really that guy? <laughs> Whereas, you know, it's like, oh yeah, that guy. Cause he's tough and looks like he's gonna break the shit out of your bones <laughs> you know that's the intimidating uh, yeah. part comes up and just <laughs> yeah that moment exactly especially if there's like a, de a demonstration of it or a display of it mm -hmm. you know it's not just an empty threat it's it's uh no it's real They're, you're gonna get messed up another one i'm thinking of is like animal handling and strength breaking an amount or mm -hmm. or even just like maintaining control of a very willful and and like strong mount you know, where it's like, all right, you've got to wrestle this thing to do what you want it to do. <laughs> well, yeah, when you're out there adventuring and your mule or your donkey pulling your cart gets uh, sees a snake or something, you know, you might have the, 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 the fighter or the barbarian go over there and do an animal handling check where you just hold them still and hold them like calm until they can just calm yeah. the hell down. Oh yeah, yeah. Or you jumped on the back of some griffin or wyvern or something. And the idea is that if you can hang on long enough, if you can just break them, you know, just get like them to a, accept like Avatar. that you're on the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just get them to accept that you're there. Then that's something else that, that's useful for this, especially something like animal handling. How often has that been rolled in anybody's game? There are moments where the kind of characters who would be in those situations are not the sort of characters who might have the ability scores to back that up or situations where you want to use it. It's going to come up more often if you're willing to uh, use different ability scores with it. How would you do a strength survival check? I might replace that for athletics for like uh, overcoming an obstacle of some kind, for like a natural hazard. Something like anywhere where your familiarity with the wilderness and how to traverse it and how to overcome its obstacles would be appropriate, I, I, I think that's where you would use it. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's like, like crossing a river. Yeah. Like, a, like crossing a swift river? Dealing with like really rocky terrain or rough terrain that doesn't necessarily require you to climb a lot, but does require you to have some kind of strength to just navigate the place because it's difficult, right? In the, say, for instance, this one, like a failure for that might, might be like a level of exhaustion or something. Yeah. Where it's just like, yeah, you just wore yourself out climbing all over these rocks. And performance, strength, strength performance is one of those that... I also I can imagine a situation where you want to put on you want to put on a display of strength. 
to impress someone, to convey some sort of uh, you know message or something like that, then I think strength performance is appropriate. And I'm specifically thinking in, in the real world of those people who'd come into your high school, rip phone books in half, tell you not to do drugs, and, and then leave, yeah. you know, they're, <laughs> they're <laughs> yes. you're supposed to be impressed by their feats of strength and, and by the, in, you know, suitably impressed. Therefore, you're more uh, likely to listen to what they have to say. And that's kind of one of those moments where that combination, I can see a player going like, all right, hear me out. <laughs> you know, I want to do this. I, I want to impress someone with a feat of strength. I want to like display my prowess, my, my you know, my virility, uh, you know, potency is, is enough to, you know, convince them. Maybe it's like... Um, now that I'm talking through it, a strength persuasion check might also be appropriate here, especially if you're dealing with, uh, you know, NPCs or, or creatures in your world that are less like moved by argument and more moved by display. You know, you show me, don't tell me kind of thing. If all they're concerned about is their own well-being and you show them exactly how much you can twist their well-being into pieces. <laughs> with, again, it's kind of a fine line between intimidate and persuasion. But yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna persuade you that, uh, <laughs> that this going along with this is going to be the best course of action in the long run. I can also see strength performance used for situations where like skill with weapons and like precision with weapons and and showing you know how you handle them, but also in a performative sense, right? Mm -hmm. Like this isn't this is sort of like a formalized uh, you know ritual combat or something like that. That it might be appropriate in this case. To say like, all right, let's see, this is not real combat. This is not about like you doing whatever it takes to win. This is about showing how precise and how much you like conform to this idealized version of, of what combat looks like for this particular people. Like a strength, uh, strength performance might be appropriate in that situation. Sounds like the joust. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> or Gallagher, you know. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so watermelons never stood a chance. Gallagher. <laughs> Sorry, that's a dated reference for our younger oh, that's audience. That's fine. <laughs> uh, you can you can Google it. One thing our our viewers are going to recognize is that like the physical type abilities, they can all sort of there's a way to justify interchanging them with a lot of the skills they're associated with, yeah, and vice versa much. with the more mental uh, yeah. abilities. Also, the phone book ripping guys could also be considered. It's a good argument for strength religion because uh, they're usually <laughs> they're usually you know <laughs> pushing the pushing a, a god agenda, so I'm gonna make a strength religion C check. Or certainly in the around. piney woods of East Texas we grew up in, yes. <laughs> so let's move on to, to the skill that already has it all, but let's see if we can oh give god. it a little bit more, which is dexterity. Or excuse me, the ability. Dexterity, uh, yeah. Dexterity, I mean, the skills associated with it are pretty accurate. I mean, you can still make an argument for some other ones. Uh, yeah. Like I, I would say if you're making a really insane jump, then not to backtrack, but strength acrobatics. To me, dexterity athletics is one that can that should be used all the time. Right. And in yeah. fact, I to me, a grapple check should be opposed athletics checks. It's just the recipient of the grapple can use strength or dex. Especially given the way that the two skill proficiencies are described in the player's uh, handbook, uh, yeah. like you know, for instance, it lists squeezing through or forcing your way through tight spaces as a strength check and i feel like that that's more appropriate for escaping a grapple than being able to tumble which is what acrobatics represents and i, yeah. I get why that there's a game mechanic reason for it but it also really gets under my skin that dexterity has to horn its way in on everything that strength does as and then some you know it's like geez stay in your lane dexterity like for real yeah. there should be some area where strength characters have an advantage over dex characters right where it's just like yeah don't let yeah. that guy get his hands on you uh, yes, uh, I, I, I do. I do agree. But dexterity checks uh, again for like animal handling. It's, mm -hmm. it's to me that's a, that's a good one, especially when you're dealing with taming a cobra or something. You need to be pretty dexterous pretty if quick, you want to yeah. be a, a, a you know a cobra whatever they're called a wrangler or a herpetologist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> controlling your mount through an obstacle course could be dexterity mm -hmm. animal handling, where your reflexes and how well you can control your mount, how quickly you can, how in tune you are with it, seems to be a real case where like that's gonna be really, really good, uh, or really appropriate for that. And I can see, mm -hmm. imagine all sorts of things where that's either it's like a contest or a race or something, or you're trying to outrun uh, an enemy or something, like dodge their attacks while you just like get through, <laughs> get through this cloud of enemies uh, dodging around them with your mount. Um, to me, 
dexterity animal handling is appropriate for mm -hmm. uh, for those types of situations. Similar with dex survival, right? Like in the same way that strength survival can represent sort of your 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 physical abilities combined with your knowledge of how to traverse terrain and, and what the wilderness is like. Dexterity survival can be similar, like I don't know, escaping from uh, from something like quicksand or drowning or, or a lot of different ways in which, all right, this isn't so much about how good I am at moving my body. It's a combination of that plus the knowledge that I have represented mm -hmm. by survival. And so while that one might be a bit more narrow than say strength survival, I, I can't see it. There is, there's some cases where it might be appropriate. Going back to like say crossing a river, maybe it's not about the speed of it, but you know, the riverbed is very slick. So it's about right. not falling over and understanding that. So you're looking for the proper place to put your foot. That's the, that's the survival part. That's the knowledge and then the actual execution so you don't fall and slip, twist your ankle, whatever. Yeah. You know, I know dexterity and performance are usually put together, but uh, I can't help but think of aliens with the knife thing. Uh, yeah. And kids, yes. don't try this if you watch no. it. But that is- I have, that is I a, put a knife through someone's finger. Yeah, <laughs> I, I cut myself once or twice, uh, I'm not gonna lie. That's a way of doing like a dexterity, you know, performance yeah, check that's that perfect is one. a little bit different. Dex performance, acrobatic stunts, right? Like I know there's an acrobatics skill, but the point of performance is to entertain. Whereas acrobatics yeah. is more like, you know, the, the actual uh, execution of a thing, the dexterity plus performance is the combination of like, I've, I have uh, physical skill with tumbling basically, but I can do it in such a way that it entertains others. Pratt falls, physical comedy, things like that. I could see being uh, dexterity plus performance. Now, the kind of game where that's appropriate in, eh, I can imagine, like impressing royalty, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. or you know, something like that, Get, getting a bunch of uh, pixies to laugh at you. That might be the way you can do that as opposed to them putting you to sleep for a thousand years. And I mean, yeah, if you can, if you can get a good prep fall in, that, that also kind of bleeds into constitution, <laughs> how, much you can, <laughs> yeah. how much you can fall. That's a good point, though, because it's like once you accept that these ability scores and skill proficiencies aren't necessarily tied to each other like absolutely the lines really start to get fuzzy dex athletics but you could easily go strength acrobatics right mm -hmm. can i make this jump and land on my feet and yeah. similarly constitution <laughs> performance could be do you impress someone with your feats of endurance are you like those street magicians who can like i don't know i'm gonna live inside this ice cube for a month or, you know, sus suspend myself by hooks, <laughs> you know. Lay on a bed of nails and have someone run across me, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, walk across hot coals. There's all kinds of things where your toughness, your in your ability to endure pain is mm -hmm. an advantage, and especially with constitution, because it doesn't otherwise have any skill proficiencies associated with it. Yeah, you gotta like, give it some love. You gotta give it some love. Uh, it, finding ways to, to use it, it can be really interesting because it doesn't have anything normally associated with it. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. for the player to show something, like you said, different about themselves. Of course, athletics, constitution is- I was a, literally about to go to con athletics, which is, to me, this is that or performance. That's what wrestlers do, right? Like yeah. they're doing a choreographed thing, but they still have to be able to like take hits and do it right and do it well. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. they could still get hurt. They're still chunking each other around a fucking ring just because it has a spring below it and like a small mat mm -hmm. underneath it. They still get yeah. hurt quite a bit. Well, I mean, the, apart from cutting themselves on purpose and things like that, but that is a good like constitution deception might be something where you like, don't break kayfabe, keep up the illusion uh, of what this is. I can really, really see something like that being used for like, oh, we're gonna pretend like we're fighting, uh, but we wanna make it look real. You know, we, we want yeah. this to be, yeah, this needs yeah. to look well, real. <laughs> light little <laughs> cut over the eye, bleeds like a stuck hog. Oh, it's nuts. Right. So, <laughs> Constitution stealth was another one I was thinking of. This would be like a sniper. Right, someone that has to like be very slow and deliberate and like, you know, you could argue maybe strength for that, but I think constitution is more appropriate here because it's about how long you can stay in one position. Like how yeah. long can you just sit here, lay here without moving, without giving yourself away? And it's not like strength sort of like, oh, I'm pinning myself against a ceiling or hanging from a ledge or something, but it's like, can you post up in this brush for a day without ever giving yourself away? That's mm -hmm. a constitution stealth check to me. That's, that's a perfect example of it. Like say, or you're on a, just on a stakeout, like you're just watching a building for, yes. I, well, I've been here for three days now. Uh, 
<laughs> Water jars are on the right. Don't touch the jars on the left. Don't just, you don't. know. <laughs> Similarly, like survival is one of those where con survival is like, how long can you go without food and water? How long can you really? To represent your rationing, maybe, of what you do yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. And I know that there's some things for that in uh, in the player's handbook, like how much do you need to eat? How much do you need to drink? And it seems like it's one of those rules where there's a con survival check here missing. This would mm -hmm. be a great opportunity to see how far you can push yourself in terms of depriving your body of what it needs. With the Outlander background, they just took care of That's how they took care of it. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's fine. Constitution, intimidate. Could be another one of those where it's like, don't don't mess with this guy. You know, they're, these are crazy. You know, and then it's mm -hmm. someone over there shoving great big daggers through their skin or like burning themselves. Walk like anything where it's like enduring pain. Would, walking on would, hot coals. Would, <laughs> walking on hot coals. Self impellation. Uh, you know, severing your own limbs. <laughs> it's D and D. You can walk away from that. Yeah. And of anything course. where. Right. Anything where your physical endurance, your your ability to impress or or like coerce someone through just how tough you are. And so it might be one of those where it's like you're in a face off with some, you know, humanoids or something like that. And, and, and you know, you're not going to get through with persuasion or, or your, you know, your face of the party just like botched it, like just a face in the dirt. Then it could just be like, all right, well, that's one thing. You'd, words didn't persuade you. We got this gal. And she's tough, right? Like, do not mess with her. And then, you know, let's make a, a roll to see how well that is conveyed. Um, yeah, and she, she puts her cigar out on her tongue, and that's your Yeah, something like that, right? <laughs> the mm -hmm. Intimidate check. I'm going to go with one that might seem weird, but uh, I'm going right. to say constitution plus any intelligence role or intelligence-related skill proficiency. And this, okay. as someone who has done a ton of research, your ability to just sit and read your ability to stay focused on and one stay thing awake. It's not, stay awake yeah. stay sharp it's not so much a mental thing at that point because you've passed beyond the can i put together clever ideas and synthesize this information is just can i get through this can i mm -hmm. keep myself from falling asleep from uh, you know just becoming so numb <laughs> that that no matter what i read i'm not going to take in any of that information the connection between mind and body is one of those things where like we like to think of them as two separate things and of course the stats of D&D &D break them down in that I think in the real world there's a lot more ambiguity between mind and body um, and I think this is one of those areas where you can justify like this isn't so much about my analytical ability the ability to remember or, or uh, you know synthesize information it's just about how long I can keep up something that's kind of physically uncomfortable you know it, mm -hmm. and sitting in a chair and reading for days on end eventually gets old <laughs> you know, eventually yeah. wears on you how would you do a con sleight of hand <laughs> <laughs> i've literally I, just been I, trying to think of think of different skills that are like wow what would that even look like trying to smuggle something in a body cavity <laughs> there do. it is <laughs> That is the Got it hidden, the, hidden in the, the old uh, prison wallet. <laughs> right. That's the uh, the most, uh, I don't know, YouTube appropriate way I think I can probably describe that. <laughs> no, that, that, that tracks. That tracks. Um, yeah. Wow. What else? That's, uh, yeah, right. Give, give yourself just a minute to let that sink in. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to. I don't have the constitution for it. How about we move on to intelligence, which might yes. be, and you were saying this before, might be the most like this is the dexterity of skill proficiencies where it can just I really do think so yeah I, right? I do think so yeah I, I think that there's a case for any of the skill proficiencies being justified for intelligence because uh, intelligence stealth where is the best place in this room to hide something where yeah. is the place that is going to be, and not just like, where is it in terms of like my perception of the room? Cause that may be more wisdom stealth. Given what I know about hiding, about concealing things, where is the best place here? It's less about like a feel for it and more you're relying on your, you know, what you know about it, your, your sort of mm -hmm. your intelligence, how well you think about it. Your, yeah, and the so architecture it, it, of the building and the time of day and the angles from the light coming through the windows, yeah. like actually processing all that, like Sherlock Holmes. Like I said, almost nearly any of the skills being appropriate for intelligence, if only because intelligence plus another proficiency represents what you know about that proficiency. You know, not just like how to apply it, which would be more of the, you know, standard ability that, that uh, applies to that skill, but like 
What can you recall about this? Who do you know that, that was also good at this? Is there any lore you can recall about this particular mm -hmm. skill? Oh yeah, this person was known for their stealth or known for their feats of strength. Those are sorts of things where it might not be obvious uh, in, in the beginning, but there's a way that you can use that information um, to say impress NPCs, recall lore about something, uh, identify something about a monster. Uh, it, it really is a matter of, in this case, the DM relaxing a bit and letting the player justify why this might be intelligence as opposed to another uh, ability. And given how, how far intelligence has fallen uh, in fifth edition in terms of its usefulness, in terms of how many classes uh, you know, use it, and, and whether or not if you're not a wizard or an artificer, you care at all about intelligence, I think it's appropriate to say like, yeah, well, we're gonna at least entertain the idea. You, I'll hear your argument for why intelligence should be used with this. Animal handling is another one of those you know, what do you know about these kinds of animals? You, you really shouldn't feed, you know, a horse that thing. Or griffins really don't, that's not good for them. This is what you should offer. And like mm -hmm. your ability to understand how an animal behaves or how a particular creature will behave uh, because of your experience, because of what you learned about it. And then the application of that knowledge is I think just a, a real, I don't know, natural pairing uh, for the two. Most of the uh, skills associated with wisdom could probably be applied that way, medicine, insight, whether it's a matter of your perception of your surroundings and how in tune you are with them, or whether you're taking a critical analytical approach to it mm -hmm. would determine whether it's intelligence or wisdom. Yeah, definitely medicine. I mean, you know, can't medicine really feel your way through a lot of medicine. <laughs> you, should, you should really know the difference. I like the idea of wisdom medicine because of what it does say about the world, which is like medicine is intuitive. It's about how in touch you are with the natural rhythms of the world, but that's not appropriate for every game. And there are games where it's like, no, I studied anatomy and I'm, you know, I'm skilled with, uh, you know, with various uh, medicines and producing them. Maybe it couples with like an herbalism kit proficiency or an alchemist kit proficiency, something like that. But moving away, I think from, from the wisdom ones, intelligence deception, you know, how clever are you? Can you construct oh, yeah. a lie that it doesn't matter how well you deliver it, it's just you've constructed such a uh, an elaborate uh, deception that it doesn't matter how you deliver it the person's going to be like wait a minute you're right you know i can you know, <laughs> i can't deny mm -hmm. what it is that you've said intelligence intimidate is one of those where you can just go like well you know let, let's just lay all this out and this is a classic pruitt move uh, of yours to be like to to get frustrated with an npc and be like all right npc here are the facts <laughs> you know here's what's going on here's what you have to face and then like using that approach <laughs> you, know, you didn't know that much <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that I, I, I usually like, I, yes, I, I, I did know that. I never really thought about doing intelligence intimidate, but uh, yeah, sometimes I, I it is good it. to or just lay it out on the table, you know, like. Uh, yeah, and the same for um, like performance, or not performance, but mm -hmm. persuasion, you know, depending on yeah. your goal, just laying out the facts and working through the logical steps of what it is, you know, intelligence intimidate or intelligence persuasion could be, uh, could be useful oh, for yeah. any, anyone It's else. also the, uh, it's also the mob boss, uh, the, the mob way of doing things. Like, we all know that you live at 228 Beaker Street and that your wife right. goes to work every morning at the same time at the floral shop. We'd like her to get to work tomorrow morning, if you know what I'm saying. Like, no, <laughs> like finding the facts out about someone and knowing their routine is much more intimidating to me than a guy cracking their knuckles. Like, I can yeah. take a beating now, but, you know, if you know things that I can't control. Yeah, to me, intelligence performance is the teaching skill. That's the, oh, that's yeah. the skill you use when you need to lecture, you need to teach, when you need to present information to someone in a way that doesn't bore them to tears and therefore they mm -hmm. stop listening to you. This, is, this right. is where you combine your, you know, your presentation ability, your ability to speak, to orate, et cetera, along with what you know. And it's the coupling of those two things that, um, that really drives the use of that skill forward. Again, like a lot of these, the kinds of games where this would work, the sorts of situations, less important than the fact that it's possible you know if, if you're a player or a dm that wants to try some of these weird ones <laughs> then it's up to you to engineer situations where it is then uh useful mm -hmm. but possibilities are, are are literally well not literally because there's a finite amount of abilities and skill proficiencies but there are <laughs> many <laughs> i was about yes. to say infinite no they're not <laughs> they abound 
Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to wisdom. The other mental stat that's like, eh, yes. you know, to me there's a lot of like, wh why is it religion wisdom instead of intelligence? Like to me that's just, that's right up front and that's one of the biggest glaring examples I think. There's all kinds of weird things when it comes to intelligence, wisdom, and the sort of classes that are good at these skills. Because it's like, yeah, a rogue can be better at arcana than a wizard, depending on what expertise they pick. Or a, or a, you know, an artificer can be better at religion than a cleric, based on the sorts of proficiencies they pick. Like for some people, that that's really weird. There are sort of knowledge skills associated with every class, or at least the sort of the core classes. And when those things don't line up, when that particular class is not particularly good at those sorts of tasks, Asks, it creates this weird jarring like what do you mean I'm not the best at arcana or the best at religion there's a lot of overlap I think between those two and allowing say religion uh, wisdom religion seems appropriate if you're say trying to divine the will of the gods right this is not this is less about what I know about the history of the religion and and its practices and more about mm -hmm. I saw an omen this morning a flock of birds crossed my path and made a strange shape in the sky what does that mean what is my god trying to tell me that's a wisdom yeah. religion check how would you characterize a wisdom athletics check wisdom athletics is sizing up a competitor yeah. right to me that's that's what that is what you know your athletics is playing in there because you have, you know sort of the techniques what it looks like when someone who's competent and trained in a particular athletic activity is preparing themselves for it. And then the wisdom is for reading body language, intuiting motivations and intent and things like that. Now, is this a strength insight role? Maybe, <laughs> but it could easily be a wisdom athletics role. Again, there's a lot of root wiggle room here in terms of what it is uh, that we're doing and sort of the, you know, how your DM and player uh, navigate these sorts of uh, tasks. But I think like wisdom athletics is appropriate for like, let's take a look at the competition. Who else that? We're about mm -hmm. to do a chariot race. All right, who, who's the best one at this, or a foot race, or something like that? Like, who here is really the you know the, the person to beat? Once you like open that up, really wisdom plus any other skill can be used for that. Who here seems like they're the stealthiest, or who here seems like they're the most persuasive, the, the person who gets things done and sort of coordinates and gets everybody together? I don't know how many times that's come up. I know I've tried to do it, and it usually stumps DMs where I'm like, I'd like to read this person. What is it? And then usually it's just like wisdom insight, but it's like, I, I don't know that insight is appropriate here because I'm not trying to gain an insight into their motivations. I'm trying to gain an insight into what they're good at and, and what they might uh, you know, use to their advantage. Sounds to me you want to be a battle master, so. Well, for one, right, or a mastermind rogue, like those are some pretty yeah. sweet abilities. By gating them behind class features, it sort of cuts off what could otherwise be something available to everybody. Yeah, I mean, anyone with skill can intuit from someone what their skill level is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and so, using, so this is a good thing you, that you brought that up because you can use those class features as a baseline. Like to me, the class features are, they always work. They, they tell you a bunch of information. And so like from there, you start, de you either decrease the amount of information or you, you know, make it uncertain, but they're like the upper limit of what's possible. And so in order to like avoid stepping on Battlemaster, uh, you know, their toes, maybe it's like, all right, well, you got to make, you know, a, a particularly high DC check to get all this information or a moderate DC check to just get one of these pieces of information. Whereas the battle master, they just know it. Their experience, their mm -hmm. training, everything. They just know this. They don't have to roll. Yeah. I know your hit points. I know your AC. I know all that stuff. Yeah. Let's, let's close it. <laughs> let's round it out with, uh, with charisma. Charisma is one of those things that whatever you do, you do it with a flair, right? Yes. Like I think of like Muhammad Ali fighting, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm getting ready to fight like he's doing these things he's doing intimidate checks charismatically to get in the head of his opponents and even in the ring like he would he would play out certain things like he would just sit there and let him hit him push him off and then that's one way you can do it whether you want to consider that a charisma athletics check or like a constitution performance check or you know right. i mean like yeah or constitution deception yeah there's again Lots of different ways you can approach it. I think that charisma plus the, 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 the associated skill proficiency is appropriate because your charisma is just represents your natural talent and, and sort of whatever uh, the ability you have for deception, persuasion, et cetera. Whereas the skill proficiency represents this specialized knowledge. So in the case you're mentioning of like trying to goad an opponent into overexerting themselves while you just turtle up and conserve your strength for a knockout blow. 
to mm-hmm. me, that is, say, charisma athletics, because using what you know about this particular physical activity to fuel your deception, mm-hmm. right? And that is, to me, that's the crux of it right there. And the same for, like, say, acrobatics. You know, if, if it's something where you're maybe you're in a tumble contest with somebody, I don't know. Uh, g- gymnasts, uh, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, you're trying to impress the uh, the king of all tabaxi. Uh, of course, oh, you've yeah. got to navigate the, the yarn ball obstacle course, the, uh, you know, the, the walking on a high shelf and knock as much off as you can. You know, those the kinds of The towering post that you have to climb. The towering post. <laughs> oh, man, the competition looks really tough. All right, well, I'm going to make them think I'm a bumbling idiot. So maybe they won't go as hard. And then when they slip up, I'm, I'm on it. I'm going gonna, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna to really just uh, give it my all. So the one that I use a lot is charisma investigation. It's about talking to people. It's about convincing them to give you information. So that's charisma. It's about following the right leads, asking the right questions, uh, that kind of thing. And so people skills plus the specialized knowledge of getting the exact information you're looking for, gather information. Mm-hmm. And uh, I miss that skill. <laughs> you know, I, I miss the. Oh yeah. I'm. I'm. You know, it, it's a. Uh, it was a handy way of sort of abstracting, sort of like, all right, I'm gonna spend two hours trying to gather some rumors. All right, make a gather info check. You know, uh-huh. um, this is how oh, I yeah. do it in, uh, in fifth. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, also, the uh, charisma insight check when you want to try to use your wiles to figure out what what they're thinking without maybe letting them know to keep them off guard. It's your way of kind of. Yeah. Pillow talk. You're trying to flirt your way into yeah. knowing some info, right? As opposed to just yeah. your straight wits. Right, right, right. Yeah, especially if it's like you're not trying to intuit their their motives or what it is they're doing through like body language and subtle tells. You're trying to intuit it through a conversation where you are sort of like, all right, I'm going to they said something, but they didn't know what they revealed to me. Yeah, you're trying to get them to say passport if this was sneakers. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this is also has a flip side because you could easily justify that as, say, wisdom deception, right? Yeah. You could say, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get information from them uh, surreptitiously without them knowing it by reading them, by asking leading questions, pull one over on them without them knowing it. And to me, this is this is why these alternate ability score skill combos rely so much on how the player describes their approach to the task that they want to do. Mm-hmm. That's where the the mix and match of these comes from, and and this is also why I recommend for players to think about what your character is doing and imagine it as a real thing, and not a game construct. And so saying things like, "All right, well, I'm here's what I intend to do. Here's how I do it." Those are the two things that are really important for uh, finding alternate ability score and uh, and skill proficiency combos is like conveying to the dungeon master, this is, this is how I do this, and this is what I want to get out of it. Uh, and once you've given that information to the DM, which is, you know, not always done, you know, sometimes it is, but, uh, you know, it's more just the approach of it than, than what the intent is. You're giving the DM the information they need to then go, all right, well, that's this kind of check. That, yeah, it doesn't make sense that this is charisma persuasion. It does make sense this is intelligence persuasion. And in that sense, I think that make, you know, making sure that you're, you're having that conversation about what's going on in the game world opens the door for these kinds of possibilities. You know, of course, you need a DM who's willing to, to be flexible about that. But I think like you can show them why they would want to be flexible by describing mm-hmm. your actions in a way that makes it obvious you're not trying to use the standard ability score proficiency uh, combo yeah i mean dm needs to be flexible with that kind of stuff sounds like an intelligence acrobatics check to me mental (laughs) gymnastics (laughs) (laughs) thank you our constitution deception yeah there's again lots of different ways you can approach it there's lots of but i I don't know I was gonna say, go ahead. The the wonders of doing these over uh, the internet. Um, yeah, well, I, <laughs> I lag is fun. I, 